cast members are my real relatives and they're here from that. can they're here from Slovakia they're in Toronto for the first time it's a big family reunion my mother hasn't seen them in over 15 years so it's not only the premiere of the film but it's it's so it's so much more and it's really profound and yeah. overwhelming and emotional and exhilarating and I don't know, I know this will never happen again. I made only, and it starred my son, Jacob Switzer, and he had extraordinary experiences traveling the world to festivals. And now I hope my daughter in her gap year before she decides what she wants to do with her life mm -hmm. will also have you know, a chance to travel and meet people that she wouldn't otherwise meet and will go into her adult life. And this is sort of our last shared experience before she does that. How did you come up with the idea for the story itself? I mean, did you, were you planning on taking your daughter to meet, or, or had she been to um, Modra before? Yeah, so Modra is the name of this little village mm -hmm. where my mother was born. The color, um, the word actually means blue in English, so that's why we have all these blue posters. I love the, the idea for the story really came from wanting to explore that in-between time because it's so fleeting, and I guess it was triggered by knowing that I was having to let go of my daughter. Like, you know, as, as a parent, you raise these children, then you have to let them go. And that's a really, um, I don't know, it's a really sort of incredible thing that happens. And it takes a lot of strength and it takes a lot of surrender, you know, right. to just let your kids go into the world and make their own choices. And you hope you've raised them well so they'll make good choices for themselves. And, and so thinking about her at this time of 17 made me reflect on when I was 17. Mm -hmm. And it was um, the first time I returned to Slovakia and I met my family because I'm an only child and I've always dreamed about having a big family. And so when I was 17, I went back home and um, I felt like I, I wasn't so alone in the world, really, to just put it in a really corny way. And so thinking about that time triggered this story, and I asked my daughter if she was interested in acting in a film, mm -hmm. and she said she was, and she was interested in shooting something in Slovakia. So then I started to craft the screenplay. And I was always bouncing stuff off yeah. her, so I would read her lines of dialogue, and I would see how it, you know, how it felt to her, and if it was natural, and I really wanted the dialogue to feel real. And so when 17-year-olds watch the film, they you know, they think it's a true and authentic depiction. The two teens seem sort of, I don't know, angsty and disconnected initially, and then when they went to Modra, that was so it was so warm, and there was this multi generational thing happening. Do you, do you think we have that in Canada to the same degree? Well, I think community is really strong, and the traditional values of you know Eastern Europe are almost frozen in time in a little way in this in this village yeah. and I think we do it too I mean I think Canada is so multicultural that you know there's a there was a huge Italian festival on College Street right. and you know the Slovaks have their festivals and the Hungarians yeah. have their festivals and the Russians have, we're just a little bit segregated and you know but there are so many communities and I feel very welcome. I mean, anyone could walk on College Street and participate in the Italian festival. And I'm really interested in making art house for youth. And I'm very interested in, you know, making films that aren't about tweeting and texting. And oh, there's God. no cell phones in this movie. And, and there's nobody on a computer. And they all have computers. Yeah. They all have laptops. And I'm a pretty fast paced person. Yeah. So I think maybe I make films to counterpoint my own energy in a way. <laughs> and I want to experience things in a movie theater that sort of slow me down a little bit. Right. You know, and I work with Peter Mettler as a documentary filmmaker. Oh, okay. Yeah. I produced his film gambling gods and LSD and now I'm producing his next film with the National Film Board of Canada and it's about time mm -hmm. and it's about how we experience time and I'm drawn to things like that that just kind of make us be in the moment a little bit more. So I hope Modra puts people in that moment of being 17 and going to Europe for the first time and seeking their their true love and mm -hmm. having a bit of a struggle with that because it yeah. certainly took me a, quite a while to find my soulmate, you know? I don't know about you, yeah. but oh, I don't have one. Search and find is, is tricky. And when you're 17 yeah. Yeah. and you're doing it all for the first time and you really want to meet somebody, but mm -hmm. 
you don't really know how to go about it and you're just trying to figure your own, your own self out yeah. and it's all happening for the first time because you don't have those reference points of experience that's really interesting to obviously me obviously wasn't a sex scene but uh, a scene where she's being intimate with a with a guy do you, do you turn off the mother and turn on the director or how do you I, my daughter who plays the lead role was quite uh, concerned about being directed by her mother and having her father be the sound recordist. So knowing that there was going to be intimacy in the mm -hmm. film and there was going to be some raw stuff, having her father, you know, hold a, a mic and listening to every breath um, <laughs> magnify through headphones was pretty daunting. And yeah. I mean, I've heard her say that once we got shooting, it wasn't like she was directed by her mother and her and her father was listening to every utterance. It was more like he was the Sandman and I was the director and there was a real professionalism. It, you know, mm -hmm. we definitely had our, our, our mother daughter moments more in the morning at breakfast before shooting. All of us ate together. It was a really small crew. I mean, one man camera department, Ian Anderson, who also mm -hmm. shot only one man sound department, my husband, John Switzer, and my editor, Aaron Hansen was with us, which was really important for me to look at the footage every night. Mm -hmm. But she was incredibly professional and we talked and we rehearsed a lot before we left and everybody knew what was, what the sort of intimate scenes were about. But one thing that wasn't in the original script um, was the fight scene. And there was some tension and the shoot was pretty grueling and we were always in exterior locations so we had natural light to deal with and the sun kind of moves around. So yeah. when you're trying to shoot a scene and your, your source, your key light mm -hmm. is constantly moving yeah. so someone's face is really well lit and then in about 30 seconds it's half in shadow. <laughs> so then do you reshoot for the shadow version? Do you wait for the sun again and reshoot for the sun version? So there was a lot of repetition and you know some of those scenes were shot 25 30 times and right. so tensions mounted and there was frustration and there was exhaustion and i really felt like they had to blow off some steam mm -hmm. and so i wrote that fight scene essentially for them to just let her rip and uh, i didn't know if it would be in the film necessarily but um shooting it i started to sense that it was actually a really important scene between their oh, characters yeah. and there were things like that happened like that where there was absolutely a 90 page script. It was the foundation, mm -hmm. but I wanted to be able to spring from that. And a scene like that fight scene created a major structural shift in the narrative. And when I saw that and we assembled it, everything thereafter was affected. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, and being totally honest with you, I did not know how the film would end. I didn't know what the last scene was going to be until we got to our last day of shooting and I wow. wrote that merry-go-round scene yeah. um, the morning of and they had to learn those lines about 10 minutes before we were shooting and we had about 20 minutes with the sun in a certain position so we could get seen. But I, I didn't know how it would end, wow. which is kind of exciting. That is exciting. Because That's when you're, I, I like that um, authenticity of discovery in the process was really mirroring being 17 where you don't really know what's going right. on and where you're going that's what the making the film was like oh very which, nice which you know if yeah. there were any tense moments between my daughter and I, I would say that was it I purposely wanted to be very flexible mm -hmm. and as an actor I can appreciate understand you know and, and she wanted to know what she was doing and she felt she had a really firm handle on her character and when I started changing things she started to feel like she was not in control of her character <laughs> and although it was uncomfortable I was really excited as a director because I knew that's when the best work was going to come. Right. When you don't feel like you're quite in control, but you have this enormous trust and respect, and that got us through because there's no one I trust and respect more than my daughter, and I know she really trusted me, so we could let go of being in control with each other. That is pretty awesome. That's beautiful. Yeah. She's sitting off camera. Yeah, she for, is, <laughs> with her shades on. <laughs> so. What do you think, Hal? Did I explain that well?